What is up everyone, my name is Jack Southall, back again with another video and today I'm here with my WWE Elimination Chamber 2019 review. I'm about 2 million years late on uh, this review, but uh, yeah, let's just, let's not mess about, alright? Let's just get into it. So, um, I believe that there were a few pre-show matches, or I think there was like one for the Cruiserweight title. It was Buddy Murphy and Akira Tozawa, and I don't really remember what happened, but I heard it was pretty good. So, um, yeah, Buddy Murphy retained, which I'm more than happy for. He's great. Uh, I'm not sure who he's going to face at WrestleMania. I know they're holding a tournament at the moment to determine who he's going to face at WrestleMania 35. I mean, we need a kickoff match. So, uh, yeah, hopefully Buddy Murphy and whoever it is wins the tournament and absolutely tears it up. Uh, we open up the show with the Elimination Chamber match to determine the first ever women's tag team champions. The teams were... Uh, Bailey and Sasha Banks, Carmella and Naomi, uh, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, Nia Jax and Tamina, the Iconics, and uh, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan of the Right Squad. So um, Sasha and Bailey and the team of Mandy and Sonya start in the chamber, and then um, Mandy Rose gets her foot stuck in the chain, and then Bailey hits her with a neck breaker. Then the Right Squad enter next after that, and then um, they all have a bit of a fight for a bit. I think they do like a big like triple suplex thing from the top rope, which I thought was really well done, involving all six competitors. And then um, everyone who was just laid out from that move, the Iconics then enter, and they try to pin everyone that's on the ground, which I thought was a smart move. Uh, Naomi and Carmella entered right afterwards, and then uh, I think Carmella hit a Harukarana on Peyton, I think it was Peyton, uh, into the chain that part of the chamber and uh, Naomi has a stare down with Mandy Rose because of the feud that they were having on Smackdown Mandy Rose who just wanted to steal Jimmy Uso away from Naomi and um, until the Iconics do a great double roll up pin on Naomi and her team gets eliminated and then Nia Jax and Tamina finally enter the last team to enter and um, as soon as they come out the Iconics are like no we're not having any of that so they run back into a pod and try to hide but then Nia and Tamina open the pod, uh, they throw them into the chains and eliminate them. And then they also eliminate the Riot Squad. And then Nia... <laughs> this, this fucking moment, man. Nia runs towards Bailey, but <laughs> Bailey moves out of the way and just crashes through the pod. If I find that gif, I'm going to play that on loop for the remainder of me talking about this match. So um, there was a Meteora and Elbow Drop by uh, Sasha and Bailey. And with the help of Mandy and Sonya Deville, they eliminate Tamina and Nia. So the two teams that started off this match ended up ending it, which I, I thought was good. I, I actually like that. Uh, Bailey gets uh, thrown into the pod. Uh, Mandy hits her finisher, but then Sasha kicks out. Sonya accidentally spears uh, Mandy Rose, which pretty much cost the team the match. As Sasha locked in the bank statement with her legs due to her arms being hurt at the time to uh, win the women's tag team titles. Uh, for Bailey as well. So, uh, yeah, I believe I predicted that correctly. I know I got a few matches wrong at Elimination Chamber, but I do think I picked this match correctly. And I thought this was actually a pretty solid match. I mean, it was a bit messy in some places, but, like, overall, I genuinely enjoyed myself with this match. Um, seeing Bailey and Sasha Banks become the women's tag team champions and how emotional they got after the match, talking about it, you can tell... You know, Sasha Banks has had just so many historic moments, man. She's a bona fide Hall of Famer, and this is definitely going to help her uh, solidify herself as a Hall of Famer one day whenever she decides to retire. And the uh, same goes with Bailey as well. I'm happy that the first champions of this modern era since the brand split have been the four members of the four horsewomen. So you have Bailey and Sasha winning the first ever women's tag team titles, Becky Lynch winning the first ever SmackDown women's title, and Charlotte being the first Raw women's champion. So I think that's really cool. Uh, maybe, I'm pretty sure that's not deliberate. That's just something that happened. But it's still cool to see that the four horsewomen uh, were the first champions in like every major women's title that's out now. That's just a neat little thing, but yeah. Happy to see Bailey and Sasha as uh, the women's tag team champions, and they will be defending their titles against Nia Jackson Tamina. Now, if you know Sasha Banks' track record when it comes to holding championships, anytime she defends it, she automatically loses. So, 
Hopefully Bailey ends up getting the pin and wins it for Sasha, or this will be a case where Nia Jax and Tamina become the women's tag team champions and Sasha once again loses it on the first defense. So afterwards, we had the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. It was The Miz and Shane McMahon versus The Usos, and uh, this match was all right. It was all right. Um, before the match, Miz announced that him and Maurice are going to be having another child, so congratulations to them. Uh, during the match, Shane hits a coast-to-coast -coast on Jimmy, but then Jay catches him with a super kick. Then uh, he hits a splash, but then Miz breaks up the pin. There was a nice springboard axe handle by the Miz. Shane then hits an elbow through the announce table on Jay. That was a crazy spot. It's always Shane has always got to go out of his way to just kill himself. <laughs> It was it was ridiculous, man. Um, but then Miz goes for the skull crushing finale, but then Jimmy rolls up the Miz to win the SmackDown tag team titles. I was not expecting them to lose this early on. Uh, I don't know if I said that in my predictions. I don't think I did. But to see him lose this early, I feel like they would have lost it maybe at Fastlane or a little bit before WrestleMania to set up a feud between the two. But um, no, they gave it to the Usos early. Um, which I don't have a problem with. The Usos are an incredible team, and they've held the SmackDown Tag Team titles plenty of times. Um, but, I don't know, I felt like they gave it to them a little bit early, but who knows, maybe that could be part of the storyline if they're going to do the Miz vs. Shane McMahon at some point, which it looks like they could do. I don't know who they're going to turn heel. Maybe they turn Shane heel, since the Miz just turned babyface, but honestly, man, who, who knows? It's interesting to see where this team will uh, end up. I'm not sure if they're booked on Fastlane. Yeah, they, they are booked for uh, a rematch at Fastlane, and if so, I feel like that's going to be the match where one of the members turn on each other and uh, create a bit of hostility between the two. But um, until then, I'd have to say the match was okay. It wasn't anything great, that great, but um, it did its job uh, furthering the storyline between The Miz and Shane McMahon and uh, their fight to become the best tag team in the world. And then we get to the Intercontinental Championship handicap match. It was Bobby Lashley defending his title alongside with Leo Rush versus Finn Balor. Uh, this match didn't really do much for me. Honestly, I thought this was kind of a bit of a letdown. Because, you know, Finn Balor and Bobby Lashley can have good matches. And with Leo Rush in the mix, apparently they had like a really good match on, on Raw for the Intercontinental title. Which I feel like I should check out because Leo Rush... Has a lot of talent with him, man, and so does Bobby Lashley. But I guess like the feud wasn't really clicking that well, and the match didn't really deliver, unfortunately. But um, yeah, so Finn tries to uh, corner Leo, and uh, throws both men out and hits a dive outside. And uh, Finn hits his coup de grace on Leo Rush to win the Intercontinental Championship. And then right after the match, Lashley just full on slammed Leo Rush had a frustration of losing the Intercontinental title, which I didn't really blame Bobby Lashley at all for. Leo Rush did kind of cost him the match. Um, but yeah, Finn Balor is the Intercontinental Champion, and obviously they gave the belt to him because uh, they didn't want Lashley looking weak, and uh, they'll probably have a rematch sometime down the line. I think it's at Fastlane. I'm going to check Fastlane again. I think they do have a match. Uh, no, they don't have a match announced yet. That's weird. I mean, they should, but whatever. I mean, they probably announced something on Raw this week about it, maybe, since there are a few more matches that need to be filled in for Fastlane. But, uh, yeah, bit of a disappointing match. And, uh, however, there's nothing wrong with Finn Balor winning the Intercontinental title, and I hope he does great things with that championship. Next, we have the Raw Women's Championship match between Ronda Rousey and Ruby Riot, And uh, this was just a technical 25-minute uh, five-star classic. I'm just fucking kidding. It ended in less than two minutes with Ronda Rousey making Ruby Riot completely tap out. And um, you'd think, oh, that was a waste of a match. What was the point of that even? Um... Right after the match, because Charlotte was on commentary throughout the entire thing. Also, Ronda Rousey looked pretty badass in her uh, Sonya Blade-inspired attire, since uh, she'll be voicing her in Mortal Kombat 11. And uh, so Charlotte then stares down Ronda. But Becky Lynch, the suspended Becky Lynch, shows up into the crowd. Obviously, she had a WrestleMania main event taken away from her, so she runs into the ring. Well, she 
hobbles to the ring, as her legs still hurt, and uh, completely batters Charlotte with the fucking crutch. It uh, it was brutal. And then she hit Ronda with the crutches, and uh, she gets thrown out by security. So yeah, this whole Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair, uh, Becky Lynch thing has just been fantastic. I've loved everything about this feud so far. Becky Lynch doing whatever she can to get back that spot, despite the fact that um, she's been uh, suspended by Vince McMahon and Charlotte taking it over and all that stuff. It's It's been very intriguing, uh, television for sure, and I was expecting her to uh, show up at Ric Flair's birthday to kind of crash it, but then she got arrested after interfering in some other stuff. So, yeah, just Becky Lynch keeps me from not watching wrestling. She's just... She's so good, man. She's just... She's the man. She's just the man. And uh, Charlotte's just been a fantastic heel, and I feel like it's only a matter of time before Ronda completely flips out on the fans, because uh, I think the night after Elimination Chamber, she uh, just ranted on uh, Ruby Riot and the Riot Squad, or maybe that was beforehand. I'm not really sure, but I reckon a heel turn's coming soon, because these fans... They don't want to see anything else but Becky Lynch winning that Raw Women's title. Uh, they just won't have it any other way, man. And, yeah, just this feud has been great. This feud has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, then we get to a no-DQ match between Baron Corman and Braun Strowman. Uh, it could have been so much better. I mean, Baron Corman is just the most uninteresting lamest character in WWE, and then Braun Strowman, I don't know, what's happened to him? He hasn't really felt the same for the last few months, it feels like he's been really mid-cardish, and not really the crazy Braun Strowman that like flips over an entire arena or something like that, you know, the Braun Strowman we all know and love, but yeah, Strowman snaps Corbin's kendo stick, and Corbin then throws an office chair at Braun, but he completely no-sells it. And the Rams Baron threw a table into the corner, which was great. And then Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley interfere and uh, smack Braun with a couple of chairs. And the ending, which I thought was really cool, actually. I did like the ending of the Snow DQ match. Baron, Lashley, and Drew then triple power bomb Braun, shield style, through two tables, and uh, Baron wins. I don't even want to talk about this match anymore. It's just... Baron Corbin's just shit. I'm, I'm now starting to see why Billy fucking hates Baron Corbin so much. He's just so boring, man. There's nothing interesting about him at all, and I just hope Braun Strowman just kills him, or Kurt Angle. Like, if we're gonna see Braun and Kurt at WrestleMania against this chump and Lashley and McIntyre, then, man, that's just lame, personally. Um, before we talk about the, the main event, which was anything but lame, uh, Lacey Evans walks out, and that's it. She just walks out, <laughs> which is now her thing. She just interrupts at random points of the show and just walks out. It's so fucking stupid. I mean, if this is their way of, like, gaining heat, then I guess it's working, but... It's just dumb, man. What does Lacey Evans... What does Lacey Evans... I can't speak... What does Lacey Evans do? She just walks out and that's it. Well, awesome. Hopefully she does get into the ring at some point because she's not that bad of a wrestler from what I've seen in NXT. She's, she could actually be pretty damn good. But yeah, this gimmick is just fucking not doing anything for me. Just walking out there like an idiot and not even competing. It's just stupid. But then we get to the main event. The WWE Championship Elimination Chamber match. Daniel Bryan, the eco-friendly warrior himself, uh, putting his championship on the line against AJ Styles, Jeff Hardy, Kofi Kingston, Randy Orton, and Samoa Joe. And before uh, Bryan is like cutting a promo before entering the uh, Elimination Chamber, and the officials tell Rowan to basically fuck off, and he's ejected to the back by the officials. And so Daniel Bryan starts off the match uh, with Samoa Joe, and then uh, Kofi Kingston en- enters next. And uh, he gets hung up on the ropes, and Brian hits a top rope knee, which was great. Uh, Brian runs to the top of a pod, and Kofi jumps up to uh, stare him down, which um, Kofi Kingston uh, expect to see 
me talk about him quite a bit in this match because he he what made this match so much better than it already was man Kofi oh is he's fucking incredible right now and so um, Kofi dives from the chamber to Joe and Brian uh, Styles enters next and then uh, Samoa Joe gets eliminated Jeff Hardy then enters the match and in one of the best moments of the night Jeff Hardy hits a fucking swan time bomb off the pod onto AJ who's hung up on the top rope that was a insane spot and because Jeff Hardy I mean his character is basically just putting his own body on the line just to get the victory but sometimes he can backfire on him and in this case it did as Daniel Bryan hits the running knee on Jeff Hardy to get eliminated um, AJ then hits a German on Daniel Bryan while superplexing Kofi Randy Orton then enters the match and uh, another fantastic moment. This was a fucking great Elimination Chamber match, man. Uh, Styles goes for the Phenomenal Forearm, but gets caught with an RKO on the top rope to get eliminated, which I thought that was a great spot. I mean, Randy's been really killing it with his RKOs over the last couple of months. Like, I reckon if he has a match at WrestleMania, he, should, he needs to pull it out in some crazy moment, man. So, um, Kofi Kingston... With, in the surprise of the night, hits uh, the Trouble in Paradise on Randy Orton to get eliminated. So Brian and Kofi are the last two men in the ring, which I'm so happy Kofi did uh, become the second last person in the match. And can I just say, the last couple of minutes of this match between Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston, I have not marked out this hard to a match in quite some time. And I was going for Brian as well. I've never wanted to have a prediction be wrong in my entire life more than that moment between Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston. It was truly a fantastic ending to this match. Just the crowd were just on their feet for Kofi Kingston, man. And they were booing Daniel Bryan over Kofi Kingston. Could you imagine telling someone that five years ago that Daniel Bryan would be booed to the hell and back over Kofi Kingston. So they exchange some strikes. Kofi hits an SOS and then Brian kicks out. And just Daniel Bryan just yelling at Kofi, you don't deserve to be here with me. And all that stuff. And so Brian hits uh, multiple drop kicks into the corner. But then Kofi hits a double foot stomp. But Brian kicks out. You have no idea how much I was marking out to this ending. This was ridiculous. And so, Kofi throws Brian into the cage. He uh, then goes to throw Brian into the pod, but then gets reversed. Brian hits the running knee on Kofi, and I thought for sure this was it. When he hit the first running knee, I thought Brian would win it. But holy shit, he fucking kicks out. Like, oh my god. And then Brian stomps on Kofi, but he kicks out again. Kofi... Then hits the trouble in paradise, but then Brian rolls him up, but he kicks out. Kofi Kingston, oh, he just looks like a fucking megastar in this match. And so Kofi smashes Brian's head into the lexicon on the top of the pod. And so Kofi goes for a boom drop from the top of the pod, and he misses Brian, and that's when it all ended for him. He hits the running knee, and Daniel Bryan retains the title. And you could just hear the air getting sucked out of the audience when Brian got the pinfall. Could, like, five years ago, Daniel Bryan faced Randy Orton. And when he lost to Randy Orton, the air got sucked out of that place. I remember Because I remember watching that pay-per-view and just feeling so bummed out that Daniel Bryan lost. And now here we are in 2019, Daniel Bryan winning the Elimination Chamber and the crowd's just like... Oh, Fuck, man, that sucks, because Brian's a different person. He's the eco-warrior that shoves his opinion down people's throats compared to someone like Kofi Kingston, who's been busting his ass for the last 11 years and has never gotten a proper shot at the WWE title until now. And when he now has that opportunity face in front of him, he's not going to pull any punches. He's been waiting way too long for this opportunity. And then right after the match, the crowd just stands up and cheers for, for Kofi Kingston. And deservedly so. It was it was a fantastic moment to see uh, Kofi Kingston. This was 
easily the highlight of his career so far. And we were going to get him versus Daniel Bryan at Fastlane, which would have been awesome. But no, Vince McMahon being the old out-of-touch prick that he is, did to Kofi Kingston exactly what he did to Becky Lynch and said, you know what, I don't want you at Fastlane. Instead, Brian, you get to face Kevin Owens. Which I don't get because in the promos that Kevin Owens has been cutting over the last few weeks, he's sounding like a babyface. Like a cutting a babyface style promo. But I guess he's a heel? I'm not really sure because... He didn't really show any heelish tendencies towards Kofi Kingston, so the lines as of where Kevin Owens is right now is very blurred at the moment because people just don't want to see Kevin Owens face Daniel Bryan. They want Kofi Kingston, although I'm not sure if they're going to change it last minute. I mean, there is one more SmackDown before Fastlane, and anything can change at that point, but... Yeah, I don't know, man. But they're really making us on the edge of our seats for this build for WrestleMania. Like, the good stories that are coming out of WrestleMania have been really good and have been able to capture my attention. So, um, yeah, that was it for the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Fantastic Elimination Chamber match. Fantastic main event. Match of the night, I just talked about it. The Men's Elimination Chamber match for the WWE title. Uh, my spot of the night... Ooh, there were some good spots on this pay-per-view. There were, like, some really good moments. But I'm going to have to say, uh, for me personally, seeing uh, Jeff Hardy do the Swanton Bomb on AJ Styles, I just thought that was a crazy moment. How I'm going to rate this show, um, I'm going to give this show a 7.5 out of 10. And the reason I'm going to give it that is because there were some legitimately great moments. Like, I thought the women's ta the two chamber matches were great um however some of the mid card matches were uh, a bit lackluster uh actually you know what? i'm going to change it to a six and a half out of ten. Six and a half out of ten for uh, elimination chamber yeah i'm changing it on the spot i don't care because the two elimination chamber matches were were great and especially that main event that was fucking fantastic but the rest of the card didn't really do much for me it was pretty pretty like meh to lame especially that baron corbin braun Strowman match that sucked <laughs> but uh yeah thank you guys for watching this video i hope you guys have enjoyed if you did make sure to leave a like comment down below your thoughts on the elimination chamber pay-per-view and if you want to see more from me hit that subscribe button you'd be glad you did twitter and instagram is at jackmanlaw31 if you want to check me out there thank you so much for watching and i'm out in three two one